All right, welcome to the video for Matter and Change, Chapter 2, Section 1. Finally, we're getting to some real science, chemistry kind of stuff. All right, but before we get started, we're going to have to go over some key terms. You just, these are some things, unfortunately, you're just going to have to memorize. Uh, first one is matter is anything that takes up space and has mass. Two. Weight is the measure of the pull of gravity on an object. So it's possible for something to have mass, but not have weight. Mass is the amount of matter the object contains, the amount of stuff in an object. The fancy science term is the amount of inertia in an object. But for our intents and purposes, the amount of matter or stuff the object contains will suffice. Finally, volume, it's not turn the volume down on your radio, it's volume is the amount of space that it takes up. All right. Take a look at the picture and see how many states of matter are represented in the photograph. And think about that for a moment. I see some solid here. I see some gas and the steam rising up. I see liquid in both the water and the lava, so that would be there are three states of matter represented in this photograph. Yeah. Right. Mass. The mass of an object is the amount of matter that the object contains, like we talked about before. Now, Picture aside, it's not quite to scale, but in general, a ping pong ball and a golf ball are about the same size. However, the golf ball is going to have more mass than the ping pong ball because there's more stuff in the golf ball, mainly because the golf ball is solid and the ping pong ball is hollow. But the golf ball contains more matter, so the golf ball has more mass. All right. Another key term we're going to talk about is a substance. And substance is a word that you're going to have to know. The regents can possibly ask you which of the following things are a substance. You're going to have to be able to answer it. So in general, materials differ in, the ter in terms of the kind of matter they contain. Uh, certain things, though, is always going to be the same. Like table sugar is 100% sucrose, making table sugar a substance because it's always the same the chemical composition is always the same so matter that has a uniform and definite composition is called a substance meaning it's the same throughout and all right, so so more on substances substance can can contain only one kind of of matter. If you have more than one kind of matter in it, it's not a substance. So, which of these two is a substance? Water or lemonade? Well, let's see. What's in lemonade? Well, I'm going to make some lemonade. Well, I need lemon juice. Sugar. Otherwise, it's just going to be sour. And what's the point? And water. Well, since there's three different kinds of matter in there, it can't be a substance. Water, however, is straight up H2O. One kind of substance, one kind of matter, it's considered a substance because it's going to be the same throughout. So, with substances, all samples of a substance will have the same physical properties. All samples of water are going to have the same physical properties of other water. I should be specific there and say liquid water. I'm going to be, have the same physical properties as other samples of liquid water. Uh, before I talked about sucrose, table sugar, it's always going to taste sweet, and it will always dissolve completely in water, unless you put too much of it, but we'll get to that later in the year. All right, so... Uh, Way, one kind of way we'll describe matter is we will talk about its physical properties. And a physical property is a quality or condition of a substance that can be observed or measured without changing the substance's composition. So you have to be able to measure it without 
really changing what it's made of. And those would be dealing with physical properties. Some examples of physical properties would include things like its color, its solubility, how easily does it dissolve in water or another liquid? What does it smell like? Its odor. Is it soft? Is it hard? So it's hardness. It's density, a term you should really, I hope, remember from eighth grade, right? How tightly packed the molecules are of something is its density. And then also the temperatures at which it melts and boils. It's melting point and boiling point. So these physical properties will help chemists identify a substance based on its characteristics. So let's say we want to think about boiling and melting point. So which substance is this going to be? It's a colorless liquid that boils at 100 degrees Celsius and melts at 0 degrees Celsius. What would that be? Well, if you guess water, good old H2O, that would be correct. What about another one? A colorless liquid that boils at 78 degrees Celsius and melts at minus 117 degrees Celsius. Okay. If you looked at it, it would look the same as water, but it has some different physical properties, and that would be ethanol. All right, so like before when we looked in the picture, we saw different states of matter that would frequently be called phases. I usually refer to them as phases. Your textbook says states, and those are solid liquid, and gas, and we'll spend some more time on those later. Actually, we'll spend more time on them now. I messed up my pages. Okay, so different states of matter. We're going to talk about a little bit of each about solids, liquids, and gases. And a lot of this really should be review, right? So solid, some examples, coal, sugar, ice, iron. I have to memorize these. I'm going to give you a table in a little bit. But solids always have a definite, and by definite meaning the same shape and volume. If you're going to change the shape and volume of a solid, you're going to have to break it first. Okay, The solid keeps its own shape. If you take it out of its container, it's still going to keep its own shape. The particles are packed very tightly together. Okay, And it's going to be almost incompressible. What does incompressible mean? That means you can't squeeze it and make it smaller. So if I were to squeeze a block of lead or a block of steel, I'm not going to be able to make it smaller. I'm just going to really hurt my hand. When you heat it, they're going to expand slightly. I and mean, they do expand, and it is noticeable, but not necessarily to the naked eye. You would need some sort of very precise measuring equipment to be able to figure out how much it does expand. Yeah. So, liquids. Some examples, water, milk, blood. The liquids always take the shape of their container. They flow. They are fluids. The particles are packed closely together but not rigidly packed. Rigidly means it's not going to move, but the particles in a liquid do move. Okay, The volume that a liquid occupies is always going to be constant. You can't take two liters of soda and squeeze it into a one liter bottle, no matter how hard you try, no matter what shape it takes. You can't take the amount of liquid and make it take up less space. Okay, it's almost incom incompressible. It will expand a little bit when heated, but not a whole heck of a lot. Uh, if you've ever seen like a floor jack, right, that uses a liquid to push the jack up. The brakes in your car use a liquid, and you step on the brake pedal. Right? There's going to brake fluid that's going to push, and it's going to take the caliper and push it together around the wheel. If the liquid were compressible, then the car wouldn't stop. The brakes wouldn't work. 
So a liquid is going to be pretty much incompressible. All right, gases. Gases always take the shape and form of their container. They're going to always expand to fill up the container. They're going to take as much room as they possibly can. Gases are also considered a fluid. The particles in a gas are spaced very far apart. So if we want to think solid liquid gas, right, and hopefully this is reviewed, right, the particles in a solid are packed really tight. Everybody's touching everybody, getting on each other's nerves. A liquid, a little further apart, but still close enough that they can be right near each other. Finally, a gas, the particles are really far apart, and this is even kind of close though. Okay? They will expand without limit. They will fill whatever container they are in. It's like saying, can you blow up half a balloon? No, because the gas always fills the balloon. And gases are very easily compressed. You can take those gas molecules and push them really close together and get more into that container. So, a lot of substances might be a liquid or solid at room temperature, but when you really heat them up, they'll turn into a gas. Others are gas at room temperature, you know, like the gases in air, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, etc. At room temperature, they're going to be a gas. Water, however, is a liquid at room temperature. Okay? So for these, steam will be, is referred to as a vapor because water is a liquid at room temperature. You heat the water up, it gets really hot, and it's going to form steam. And then another thing, just a little extra information. Moist air contains water vapor. So on like a real humid day, you know, like we'll usually have a school here in September, and it'll be hot and humid and everything sticky. That's because of the water vapor that is flowing around in the air with the other gases. All right, so here's a table that you're going to have to uh, kind of copy down, and you're going to need to be able to duplicate it from memory. But just to kind of review, if we think about the properties of the states of matter, properties of solid, liquid, or gas, and we think about those properties being shape, volume, expansion on heating, and compressibility, can you squeeze it? Solid always has a definite shape and a definite volume. It will expand a little bit when you heat it, not a whole heck of a lot, depending on the type of solid. And you can't compress it. It's almost incompressible. Liquid. Indefinite shape, but still has a definite volume. Takes on the shape of its container, but still has a definite volume. It'll still take the same amount of space. If you spill it, that space might be all over the floor, but it's still a definite amount of space. And it will expand on heating, but moderately. Once again, not a whole heck of a lot. And just like a solid, it's incompressible. Gas does not have a definite shape, so it's an indefinite shape and an indefinite volume. We can make it take up more space or less depending on how you compress it. It expands a lot upon heating, which is kind of how explosives work, right? You light the gunpowder, it explodes, it expands really, really fast and propels the bullet or whatever other explosives that you're trying to uh, propel. And gases are readily compressible, meaning it's very easy to compress a gas. All right, on to physical changes. Definition of physical change is a type of change that alters a given material without changing its chemical composition. What kind of change would it be if it changed its chemical composition? Hmm? All right, so some examples of physical changes include cutting, grinding, bending, melting of metal, for example, gallium, the freezing of water and the condensation of steam to water. These are all physical changes. You haven't changed the chemical properties of the substance, only changed its physical state. All right, there are other verbs or actions that are related to physical changes, and it's just a good idea. You don't have to memorize all of these, but it's something to... Think about that. When you hear some one of these terms describing something, then it's most likely a physical change. So some of them are boil, freeze, dissolve, melt, condense. Oop, I'm missing the E at the end of condense here. Sorry about that. Condense. 
condense. All right. Uh, to break, to crack, to grind, split, cut, crush, bend. All of these things are dealing only with a physical change, not a chemical change. All right, so that concludes our video for today. Uh, see you next time.